What does freeride mean? I think it means something different to every skier. Over the past five years, we've worked with Solomon to create the QST line, bringing new technology and materials to market. Skis that have changed the narrative of what freeride skiing is. Next year is the third generation of QST. The ski designers in Annecy gave us athletes a blank slate and asked us to design our perfect freeride ski. We work together and the result is a versatile and performance-driven line of QST skis for 2021. They push the limits of freeride, no matter the skier or the conditions faced. My name is Chris Rubens and I ski on QST. Essentials.com. I got Marcus and Bob with me. Uh, what are we skiing on today? The Solomon QST Blank. Yeah, so brand new ski from Solomon. Really exciting. They also changed the QST 99, which is now the QST 98, um, which we will talk about in another video probably pretty soon. Um, but yeah, QST Blank, pretty sweet. There's, pretty awesome. there's no more 118. This one's 112 underfoot. Pretty sure I'm right with that statistic. Yep. My rep is nodding over there, so that's good. Um, but yeah, super, super fun. Kind of the gist of it is that they designed this ski to work with a wide range of skier styles, wide range of snow conditions, stuff like that. Um, we just had a fantastic run through some of the iconic Smuggler's Notch terrain. Um, what do you guys think? Right tool for the job today, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, mixed snow condition, this thing just plows right through it all. Yeah, pretty sweet. Um, so yeah, we'll leave you with some skiing footage for now, and then we'll meet you back in the studio and we'll kind of go through the changes and construction and all those details that we normally do. So you guys wanna go ski more? Yes, please. Look at that up there too. Wow, it's so nice. This place on Hey skiers, here we are back in the studio to talk more about these QSD blank skis from Solomon. Uh, another fantastic morning today. We just keep getting more and more snow. They forecasted like two inches and then we ended up getting like a five or six inch squall on top of three inches. So we ended up with more like nine inches this morning, uh, which was really good. It snowed here like 12 out of the last 14 days. Um, so things are, are piling up out there and, and the skiing has been really good, which is perfect testing conditions for these QST blanks. Um, so yeah, really cool ski. You know, Solomon kind of went back to the drawing board a little bit with their QST skis. A lot of the characteristics kind of carry over from what we got before and two skis or I think three skis, but I'm for, sh for sure certain that two skis remain unchanged, that being the 92 and the 106. So the QST 99 is now the QST 98, like I talked about in the intro. Um, and then the QST 118 is gone and in its place we get this QST blank. So super cool ski. Um, you know, we talked about in the last review that we did, the Maverick review, we talked a lot about kind of development and strategies for developing a ski. Um, for this ski, which I think makes sense considering its width and its kind of application, Solomon did it with a very athlete focused development or athlete focused style. So. They took a wide range of athletes, you know, a ton of their free ride athletes like Alexi Godbout all the way to Cody Townsend and everyone in between, people with racing backgrounds, all sorts of different skiing styles. And they really, really relied on feedback from those skiers in developing this new ski. Um, and and uh, something that I found particularly interesting in that story is that they 
they really said like if one skier wanted to make a change to that ski as long as it didn't take away from the characteristics that the other skiers wanted they would go ahead and make that change so i really like that concept you know make like subtle tweaks to a ski to help it work better for one skier while still working really well for other skiers um, so let's take a look at it you know 112 is is just smack dab in the powder category at least in my opinion and i, I think that's fair to say i don't think anybody is really saying that a 112 ski is really an, an all mountain ski um, so 112 underfoot it's more than 50 percent rocker so camber underfoot um, and then rocker tips and tails and there's a lot of it you know and there's there's a lot of tail rocker so the tail rocker starts about where my right hand is tip rocker starts about where my left hand is so yeah that's a lot of tip and tail rocker um, i think it's like 27 percent in the tip and 26 percent in the tail um, it is worth noting that the cambered section of this ski is is pretty stiff actually um, the tips and tails kind of have a little bit softer flex to them but the the underfoot portion is pretty pretty stiff which really helps when we'll get to that when talking about performance um, some smooth early taper in the tips and tails you know this is fairly similar to the shaping concepts that we've seen in QSTs thus far, I think that takes this ski in particular, it kind of takes influences from the 118 and from the 106. The tip shape is kind of more 106-ish. The tail shape, on the other hand, with that increased rocker back here and, and the long, smooth taper, more like a 118 tail, um, which makes sense considering this is kind of replacing that ski. Um, so that's shape, you know, great. Just looking at it seems like a great shape for powder skiing um, and actually seems like a shape that would be relatively versatile as well now construction of this ski it's pretty cool you know i think the qst skis in general the the story and the, and the construction has always been pretty cool we talk about it a lot um, this ski is poplar wood core they then use solomon's cfx fiber or cfx material which is a blend of carbon fiber and flax fibers. Um, and we've talked about CFX a lot, but as a reminder, it's kind of taking two different materials and combining them to kind of bring over the attributes, the benefits of both of them. So carbon, as we know, is very energetic and very responsive. Flax helps provide vibration damping. So if this ski was just all carbon, it wouldn't be nearly as smooth as it is. So Poplar wood core, um, CFX, which is actually kind of indicated by this graphic. That's about where it is in the ski. You can actually kind of see it in construction, especially the way that I have it under the light or see it in the top sheet rather. But yeah, basically through the middle of the ski, full length, I think it ends right there and, and similar spot on the tail. You know, again, that indicator right there is, is where the CFX is. Um, they then get cork damplifier in the tips and tails. So there's basically just like a little sheet or a little interestingly shaped piece of cork in the tip and the tail. Um, and then these get double sidewall techno technology. So there's a really high density piece of ABS material that sits kind of underfoot on top of the sidewall. And to me, that's a big reason why it feels pretty stiff and pretty strong underfoot. Um, so that's shape, that's construction. Let's get back to talking about performance so we can put more powder skiing clips in the video because I'm sure you guys want to see that. Um, and let's start with powder because this is 112 underfoot. I always really, really like the 118 in powder and I think this has a lot of the same characteristics. This rocker profile and this taper shape gives them such a smooth, surfy feel. Um, one of the especially in this width range you know i think when you go wider skis get like tremendously surfy but in this width width range probably one of the most surfy or perhaps the most surfiest ski out of all of them um, i just i love the way that this ski just pivots and and smears through deep 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 snow with such just ease um, it's not particularly lightweight this is 2200 grams this 186 that i'm holding 
So it's not like super agile in the sense that the swing weight is like really, really light and it just feels like you can throw it around, but it's agile in the sense that releasing the tail edge is just so easy, even when the snow is really, really deep, um, which really, really helps here in Vermont. You know, we get deep snow, we get a lot of good snow, but we also have really tight terrain. So you pretty much always need the ability to kind of kick the tail out and, and lose some speed. And this ski does that really, really well. Um, you know, I think some people might worry, like, did they lose some float going from 118 to 112? I don't think so. I skied a very, very similar line in very, very similar snow conditions on this ski as I did on the 118 back when I first tested that ski. This ski floats really well. Um, and I think it's a very subtle design element, but I give a lot of credit to this. The very end of the tip, the curvature of the ski gets like really aggressive just right at the end. Um, and I like to think about how, how that's interacting when it's underneath the snow. And I can just imagine the way that it would catch a little bit of soft snow and, and just help bring the whole tip back above the snow, um, which yeah, is really, really cool. So in powder, you know, I personally couldn't ask for anything better than this. This is a fantastic powder ski. It's exceptionally smooth and it's pretty playful just in the way that you can release the tail edge and the way that it kind of <laughs> just wants to like bounce and play through soft snow. Um, powder skiing is really fun, just period. So it's kind of hard to like create a ski and then not have fun on it in powder. But yeah, this one just... It, it, it's just a blast skiing soft snow on this ski. Um, now, they did kind of intend for this ski to be a little more versatile than the 118 that I, it, you know, it is technically replacing. Kind of bring over some of the versatility of the 106 into this ski. So it should be better than the 118 on firmer snow. It should be better in chopped up snow and stuff like that. And I definitely think it is. Um, it's, not, it's not particularly quick edge to edge but it definitely feels more responsive than that 118 did, uh, which you know makes sense considering it's quite a bit narrower. Um, but yeah, I really like the way that this ski feels not just in deep snow, which is pretty sweet. The first time we skied this um, was on a media day with Solomon and we didn't have a lot of, a lot of soft snow. So my first kind of introduction to this ski was mostly just kind of like slipping and sliding around groomers um, and they, actually carve turns like really pretty well. Um, I don't have any video footage. Maybe I'll drop in a couple photos of arcing a couple turns on these in softer snow because they, yeah, they definitely do that really well or not on softer snow, on a groomer. Um, they do that really well for a ski that's 112 underfoot. Um, and I give a lot of credit to that, that stiffness underfoot, you know, combined with the camber underfoot and kind of didn't mention this in the beginning talking about shape, but these have a 17 meter turn radius. So if you're like really kind of well balanced or properly balanced rather, and you're skiing this cambered section of the ski, you can get it to make some pretty snappy turns. Um, I also think you can kind of sit back a little bit, so to speak, or not sit back in the back seat, but kind of, you know, don't pressure this portion of the ski and then kind of let it ride and it'll make a bigger carving turn than a 17 meter turn radius might indicate. Um, we had first run of the day today was on a groomer, um, but it happened to have like six to eight inches of snow on top of it. Um, and it was just such a, such a fun ski to ski through that, that terrain or, or those snow conditions. You know, it, it has some bite to it on the firmer snow. And I think that that really makes sense going back to the fact that this ski was developed for a bunch of different athletes. So like when Cody Townsend is out touring somewhere, if he's in a really demanding, like, you know, pretty, pretty scary, dangerous situation in terrain like that, the snow is often like wind buffed and, and pretty firm. You know, ideally when you're going out in the backcountry, you're finding soft snow, but you don't always. So having a ski that feels strong and stable underfoot is, is pretty important. Um, so I think it's pretty cool the way that the ski kind of carries over from really, really good powder performance to also like feeling pretty strong and pretty capable on firmer snow conditions. 
Um, I also really like the kind of subtle freestyle influence to this ski. Um, that was kind of going back to the first day we got on it. I played around with skiing switch a little bit because that was one of the things that I was told about this ski from the get-go is like Solomon athletes that want to be able to ski switch, that want to be able to take off and land switch. Um, they had, you know, they, they were just as important in developing this ski as directional skiers who don't care about skiing switch. So I moved the binding, bindings up a little bit. Um, I found that around two centimeters forward from the recommended spot was kind of a sweet spot for me. Um, I might even consider going further forward than that, like maybe like three centimeters. The recommended spot is eight centimeters back from true center. Um, but yeah, it would be impossible for me personally to ignore the, the freestyle capabilities of this ski, or, or rather it's, it's, uh, it's willingness to ski switch when you want to, which is pretty sweet. And it kind of, yeah, like I said, goes back to that idea that it'll work for a wide range of skiers. Um, so. That's the QSD Blank from Solomon, a uh, fantastic ski. You know, like I said, it's pretty hard to not have a good time on a, on a powder ski when you get a bunch of really good snow. Um, but I think Solomon did a, a really, really good job in developing this new ski, and I, I do think it's going to work for a wide range of skiers. Um, I could see a kind of freestyle guy like myself choosing it and having a blast, and then somebody who's doing like pretty demanding technical tours could use it too. Again, it's not like super, super light, but I think in this width range, like generally skiers aren't too concerned with how light things are for, for touring. I mean, sometimes you are, but more willing to make sacrifices and weight when you get up into the 112 range. Um, so what I said in the, the written portion of this review is if I had to pick one word to describe these, it would be smooth. Um, and that's a word that I've used to describe the QSTs since they came out, is that they, they just are very, very smooth yep. skis, both in the way that they release their tail edge and kind of pivot and smear through soft snow, and in the way that they have a, a smooth, quiet feel from the construction, from that flax and the cork. Okay. Um, so, super cool skis. They are available already. Um, we don't have very many, and I'm pretty sure you have to call if you want to get a pair. So if you see this and you're interesting in, interested in picking up a QST blank, give us a call. Um, I don't think we have a lot, but we do have at least a handful of them. Um, and yeah, super cool skis. I hope I get to ski them again. Hopefully we get the bunch more blower powder to ski them in. Um, so let us know if you have any questions as usual, and we will see you guys out there on the slopes.